Battlefield 1 in 120 FPS on the Xbox Series X thanks to the FPS boost mode. They're shooting on you, boss. I know, Tony. You have to shoot back, boss. I do my very best here, Tony. That doesn't look good for you, boss. And as you can see, even with higher FPS, my skill level is still the same. Let's start with the video. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel Armok for All. FPS boost mode on the Xbox Series consoles. Almost 100 games supporting this feature already. And if you like to know what games are supporting this feature, check out the website Major Nelson, which is in my opinion the number one when it comes to information about yeah, FPS boost mode updates to games or Xbox optimized uh, games and stuff like that, okay? So make sure you check out this website. Okay, but what is this FPS boost mode actually? And don't mix it up with Xbox Series S and X optimized games. That's a complete different story, okay? So in most of the cases, we have Xbox One games and they received an update in terms of the FPS because let's say the game was running in 30 FPS and now thanks to the more powerful hardware, the developer uh, decided, hey, now we can easily run this game in 60 FPS or when the game was running in 60 FPS, now we can run it in 120 FPS. In most of the cases, this upgrade comes with a downgrade in terms of graphics. But before we talk about performance and graphic, let's talk about what is necessary. What do you need to activate the FPS boost mode on your Xbox Series X or S? And when we talk about a 120 FPS update from a game, then obviously you will need a 120 Hertz screen. In my case, I'm using the LG CX and all what I have done here in the first place is make sure my refresh rate is set to 120 Hertz, okay? If it's just set to 60 Hertz, in most of the cases, you not even see the option. And the option what I'm talking about is when you go in a game and you press the option menu, you go to manage game and add-ons and in the compatibility options. And this is a word I practiced for a very long time. Oh my God. But under this option, you can see your FPS boost trigger switch or tick box. And this has to be set on, of course, if you like to use the 120 FPS mode or in other cases, of course, maybe just a 60 FPS mode. Depends on the upgrade to the game. But there's something to consider as well. So I found something interesting with a couple of games they already received this FPS boost upgrade. So Battlefield 5 activated the 120 FPS mode after it received the update. So the tick box was set in the uh, game menu. Plant vs. Zombies, both of the games, they did not set the yeah, 120 FPS mode on its own. So it looks like that some games will uh, yeah, set the FPS boost mode on its own, others don't. Sea of Solitude also ticked the box uh, when I started or when I checked the game for the very first time. So this is obviously or more likely a preference from the uh, developer or from the from Microsoft maybe but make sure you check your game before you play because you don't want to get any surprises because when we're talking about an update from 60 to 120 fps in most of the cases this comes with a graphical downgrade okay so my first example is battlefield 1 and even on the very powerful xbox series x you can see a very big difference between the 60 FPS mode and 100 FPS mode in terms of the graphical quality. Um, when it comes to aliasing, when you move around, uh, it's very obvious in the background and on fine objects that you have a lot more aliasing than compared to the 60 FPS mode version. Also, when it comes to resolution, the resolution is really, really low, absolutely low. Everything what is in the background is very hard to see because of the low resolution. If there's any enemy in the, in the, uh, behind this fence, you probably have no chance to see this because of the low resolution. Um, but this is something, of course, what was yeah, to be expected because, I mean, 
the step from 60 FPS to 120 FPS, it's a big step. And somehow the developer, of course, needs to make sure that they need to make sure that they're maintaining the 120 FPS all the time. And they are they're doing a great job because during my whole testing, there, there was not a single stuttering or, or drop or whatever in terms of 120 FPS. I didn't notice anything at all. And of course, when it comes to uh, the direct control, 120 FPS feels so much better in terms of gameplay compared to the 60 FPS option. This is great. But again, it comes with a big downside in terms of the graphical quality. Okay, so now this is the 60 FPS mode and in terms of resolution, much, much better. You can clearly see all the details in the background, very easily to spot if there's an enemy behind this fence now. Less alazing. I'm not saying there's no alazing at all because on a very, very fine objects like the bushes, you have a little bit of alazing, but the overall graphic quality in the 60 FPS mode is so much better, but, but, you miss the 120 frames per second immediately. Uh, as soon as I started playing uh, in the 60 FPS mode, you can feel and see, of course, there is something different because even with the lower resolution, you have in the 120 FPS mode a much clearer picture when you move around, when you drive around, when you when you move around. That's that's the big advantage from 120 FPS. But <sighs> Yeah, it's a very hard decision actually in Battlefield 1 because the graphical option uh, or difference is also very high in my opinion. Okay, I have to do something because otherwise I think they will kill me. So if you like to have a yeah, recommendation in terms of Battlefield 1, then I would actually say if you play this game in uh, the campaign mode, I would actually stick to the 60 FPS mode because of the better graphic and in my opinion it is really noticeable. But if you play of course multiplayer games then you need to you need to consider actually because the problem is of course the uh, controls are much director and better in 120 FPS much better but the graphic also is Worse. So if you can't spot all the enemies anymore because of the lower resolution, there's no point uh, for you to choose 120 FPS because there's no advantage anymore. Okay. So Battlefield 1 actually is very hard to, to recommend in my opinion. Just for the campaign, I would really actually really recommend go with the 60 FPS mode. In terms of multiplayer, it probably um, depends on the map. How many players and so on and so on okay so very hard to recommend okay okay and here we are with plants versus zombie in the 120 fps mode and i really like this game the graphic quality is okay maybe our average but the 120 fps solution in this game is just great because the difference between 120 fps and 60 is not that big not at all Maybe we have a little bit more alazing uh, and a little bit of a lower resolution in the 120 FPS mode. But to be very honest, it's not really noticeable. And in my opinion, the 120 FPS mode is the clear winner in this game. And not just in this one, uh, that's a uh, battle uh, in Neighborville or whatever the title was. Uh, Garden Warfare as well is so much better in 120 hertz, uh, sorry, frames per second. Oh, oh, oh. And again, the graphical difference between 60 FPS and 120 FPS, it's, it's very minor in my opinion. So let's check out the 60 FPS version. Okay, and that's the 60 FPS version, which you can clearly see when you start playing this. You miss the very clear picture from the 120 Hertz mode. Absolutely, it's such a big difference. It's crazy, it's really crazy. And I have to say almost, it is really a bigger difference. 60 versus 100 FPS is almost a bigger difference than 30 versus 60. I mean, don't get me wrong. 60, no, uh, sorry. Um, 30 FPS is no go. 
absolutely no go anymore but uh, the upgrade to 60 fps is in my opinion not that much as from 60 to 120 fps i'm not sure if this is just my my opinion or whatever because it's so nice and clear and the input lag of course from the controller and from the tv is so much better compared to the 60 fps It's playable, it's absolutely playable, don't get me wrong, but you know, you move around, you can uh, see the uh, cars in, be in behind getting blurry, everything is getting blurry. It's just a complete different feeling. And again, the graphical difference between 60 and 120 FPS, there's almost no difference at all, almost no difference. So I would strongly recommend to play this, the Garden uh, Warfare and uh, this Battle for Neighbor Will in 120 FPS. Okay, last game for today in this video is Sea of Solitude and this game received an update to 60 FPS. So not 120 FPS, 60 FPS because it was running in 30 FPS on the Xbox One and also of course on the Xbox Series S and X. I'm not sure about the S actually if there was also an update to 60 but this is at the moment on the Xbox Series X. And again, the... yeah... Upgrade to 60 FPS is like day and night. I told you already, 30 FPS is an absolutely no-go nowadays in my opinion. It was very, very, yeah, I was very sad when uh, I noticed that this game is just running in 30 FPS on the Xbox Series X. And I was so happy when I heard about the FPS boost here, because now this game is finally playable. It's still um, a little bit sad that there is no 120 FPS update because I played this game already in 120 FPS on my PC and it is a dream of course. But again we're talking about a much more pricey system versus the Xbox Series. Uh, it's okay. 60 FPS, it's okay. It's the absolutely, it's the minimum in my opinion nowadays and it plays fine. How it looks like in 30 FPS, let's have a look. Okay, and that's the 30 FPS mode, the standard mode from the game. And I hope you can see it. this is 30 FPS, come on, it's 2021. You don't want to have this anymore. 30 FPS, no go. No go, absolutely no go. And I really hope we are not seeing that many 30 FPS games on the new consoles. We will, unfortunately, unfortunately, because some developer thinks that resolution is everything, but in my opinion, it's not. It's not. It's a combination uh, of everything. You know, resolution, nice frame rate, graphical uh, quality, of course, but just to focus on the graphical quality and then go with 30 FPS, in my opinion, it's not the right decision. But anyway, thanks God we have the uh, option here in this game to use 60 FPS with the same quality from the graphic. There is no downside at all. I checked it, it's really completely the same. But no wonder, this game was running in 30 FPS on the Xbox One. In this graphical quality, it should be easy able to run on the Xbox Series X in 60 FPS, and it does. I haven't seen any hiccup or stuttering in the 60 FPS mode so far in this game. Okay, so let's move on or let's finish this video with the summary. Okay, so what is my summary? What is my conclusion to the FPS boost mod on the Xbox series? I love it. I really love it because we have now the option between 30, 60, 120 FPS depending on the game, of course. And in some of the games we have such a better, a much better gaming experience thanks to 120 FPS. Some of the games like Sea of Solitude finally playable in my opinion because 30 to 60 FPS is like day and night. 30 FPS again, 2021, no. And full stop, no go, okay? In my opinion, a no go. 30 FPS, oh, I, I'm just looking forward for Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 5. 30 FPS, really? Seriously? Anyway, um, I know we, we will get an option between 60 and 30 FPS, but again, oh. Okay, continue. Plants vs. Zombie. 
so much better in 120 fps so much better because the difference between or the visual differences between 60 and 120 fps minor absolutely minor not to mention about okay 120 fps so much better battlefield one on the other hand very hard to recommend any mode because yes the 120 fps mode feels better in terms of controls but you can see a big difference in terms of the visual quality you can see it and it is a little bit too much you know i i mean you know me if you watch my channel for a very long time i think frame rate is more important than resolution okay so but it is <laughs> at some point of course you like to have a visual uh yeah a little bit something what you can look at as well and Battlefield 1, in my opinion, is very close on the edge where I would say 120 frames per second. Nah, it doesn't look good at all anymore. And this is, yeah, again, but it's not up to me to recommend anything. It's up to you or yourself what mode you like. And thanks to Microsoft and thanks to all the developer from the games, we have the option and for free, we have the option for free. So there's actually really nothing to complain about it, okay? Thanks God we have this option because I would actually wish that we have an option like this for PlayStation 5 games. We need more, hello Sony, we need more options for PlayStation 5 games. 60 FPS updates because we have seen what a big difference this is if you play um, Ghost of uh, Tsushima instead of 30 in 60 FPS. That's a new game, complete new gaming experience in my opinion okay so sony please do us the favor invest a little bit more in terms like this because to be very honest you know me guys i love this controller i love it but when it comes to gaming feature storage and stuff like that the xbox is so much better i'm so sorry sony but you have a lot to learn from microsoft in terms of yeah supporting games stuff like that supporting external solutions uh, or hard drives and whatever uh, but anyway okay different story for different video um this was a great video in my opinion because great options fps boost mode it's a great feature on the xbox series s and x okay again i love it okay so thank you very much for watching me and i see you in my next video see you bye